right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here for our final drawing of the basic forms, the cone. I'll start off with some notes. Now the cone is very similar to the cylinder. In the obviously the only difference would be the top of the form. So we'll start off with that. Similar to the cylinder. It has a rounded base. And rounded corners. And the only other bit of notes, so this is a short one, the shading pivots from the top point. So what that's referring to is the uh, shading here pivoting from the top point. It doesn't go clean across like this, it pivots from the top. So it, this section will have a very short gradation, this one will have a longer gradation. Okay. Now, to set this up, we're going to need a ruler, and the ruler is just to make sure that our uh, cone is centrally located and is not leaning to any other side. Go ahead and grab a ruler. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out from the left side of the paper here. Now, I'm not sure how big the paper is you're working on, um, but I'm going to measure from the left side here, and I'm just going to make a mark for the left corner of the base of my cone, and I'm just going to go in two inches here from the left side of the paper. I'm going to move to the right, and this next dot is going to be for my um, right corner of the base of the cone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to split the difference uh, and so whatever this measurement is, half of that will be for the top of the uh, cone. So half of uh, this would be, this is uh, from two inches to five inches, that's three inches. So half of that would be one and a half inches. So one and a half inches from the two mark would be three and a half. So the breakdown of the math there, half of three is one and a half. One and a half plus two is three and a half. So I'm going to move up to the top of my paper here, to where I want the top point of my cone, and I'm going to make a mark at three and a half. So now I have three dots that are going to make a nice even cone, and you can go ahead and connect them. Just the uh, top, actually. We, we're not drawing the base yet. The right side. And rounding off the base, um, not too much uh, of a trick here. Uh, really, you're just looking for symmetry, and that looks pretty good. Try not to get any lumps on this side, like a Nike swoosh sign, uh, and try not to get any lumps on this side either. I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually just going to touch the corners and try to lighten up those dots that I established at the beginning. Next, we're ready for shading. Actually, you know what? We should probably draw the base first, um, the uh, shadow I meant. So the shadow uh, on the cone, very similar to the shadow on the cylinder, I'm going to extend this um, base here to show what would be the other side because our shadow is going to start from the widest point, and that technically would be the middle of the base. With our light source, again, coming from the left side, the shadow is going to go off to the right. Now, I'm going to not point down as much this time, and I'm going to point slightly up. You can see there's just a slight upward diagonal to my ruler here, and the reason being is because I'm drawing the shadow for a cone, and that's going to end up looking conicular. There's your big word of the day. Conicular meaning cone-like. So I'm starting at the widest point, which is the middle, and going out to the right, again with a slight upward diagonal there. Because I want the sh shadow to be conicular. And I'm going to start from the widest point on the opposite side, even though I don't technically really see where that starts. Uh, it's going to start over here. It's then going to go out to the right, 
and I have it pointed down to meet where my other line is so that the shadow makes sense with this form of the cone. And you'll note that this corner of the cone is within the shadow there. Now I'm going to erase what I don't need, which is that line we put in there as sort of a guideline. And we're ready to shade. I'm starting with my darkest pencils. I'm going with the 6B. And the 6B pencil I'm using for the right side here. Now, um, the shadow or the shading on the sides of the cone, um, it's important that we, we do not, and I'm putting this over on the do not side over here. It's important that we don't fill in like this vertically and then get lighter. That would be wrong. And the same would be uh, wrong if we were to do this. If we were to get dark and just fill in like this. So unlike the cylinder, which one of those might make sense because it's a straight gradation, uh, unlike the cylinder, the value has to pivot around the top. So as we mentioned at the beginning, this is going to be a very short gradation. This is going to be an extended, longer gradation. And actually, those lines already bother me, so I'm going to erase them. So I'm starting with a dark edge, yes, of course. Uh, and even lightening up just by the time I get to the very tip of the cone. Um, and as we start extending from that line, of course, I'm doing my usual rotating of the paper. We start to pivot from that top point of shadow. Okay, of course, I'm going to get in there and get some cross hatching as well, trying to soften up my hatching that I'm doing. All of the methods that you have employed in the past using cross hatching, uh, you could use small circles, you could um, rotate the paper, you can, whatever you need to do to soften up your value um, would be best here. I'm going to switch to my regular pencil. I always end up overlapping some of the pencil usages because I know that um, some, you know, different pencils might have a different look, and I, I definitely want those two looks to blend. So I'm always, I always tend to overlap my pencil, uh, meaning, you know, I'm taking that to the, this a regular HB pencil, which is what every mechanical pencil is, and overlapping going into the spot where I just came from, trying to smooth out the difference between the two. Already needing to switch to my H pencil, which I have a 4H here. some of the lighter values. And that's coming along nicely. I'm using the, the cross hatching. Always aiming for smooth transitions of value here. Now I'm probably going to stop the shading by the time I get to about right here. And that's only so that I have a nice clean edge on the left side. A little bit more cross hatching to do. Now I'm just barely touching the paper to finish off this one edge. I'm actually going to take my 6B and come out a little further with some of that shading. Might even switch to a 4B actually. Uh, because it looks like, you know, this is kind of a quick transition here. I want the darks to come out just a little more. There we go. That's looking good. And we're just about ready for the shadow on the table. So the shadow on the table, we know that obviously right next to the um, the form that the shadow is going to be darkest. And of course, we're going in the opposite direction of the light source, which is on the left. 
So right underneath there is going to be the darkest area of the shadow, and that's 100% I'm using my 6B here to get some deep darks. And I'm using my pressure sensitivity, also coming out a little further. Uh, the 6B, I'm also going to now at this point lighten up the shadow outline, because we definitely don't want outlines on there. Switching to my regular pencil, extending that shading out from the 4, I, I believe the 6B that I had under there. Even in this little tiny shadow, I am using cross hatching, trying to get some soft value out. to finish it off here. Oh, that was a little too high. There we go. And the final step, ladies and gentlemen, would be to uh, lighten up the left side of the cone. I'm doing that with my kneaded eraser here. And I'm just going to add a little bit of atmosphere on the outside of the cone, similar to the way we did that with the cube and the cylinder. So I got my 4H pencil going down the left side here and I'm just adding a little bit of value just to establish that edge with value and not line. We definitely do not want the outlines in there. Doing a little bit of cross hatching just to make it soft and there's another thing that you can do to make it soft this would be the only opportunity that you guys would actually use the finger smearing all right and then i'll finish that off just by taking my eraser and going up on the very edge here to make sure it's nice and clean and there we go there is the cone